Good morning. My name is Patrick Allen, and I am an interviewer for the Veterans History Project for the Library of Congress at Washington, D.C. And the program in Cincinnati is uh, through the Cincinnati Hamilton County Public Library under the direction for this project of Brian Powers. And with us today, we have a fellow that has been a cameraman for me several times, Tom Lee. And uh, we also have had this set up uh, by Tom Dreher. Uh, and we are at Ohio Living, Cape May in Wilmington, Ohio. And we have the pleasure this morning of interviewing Robert Allen Hudson. Mr. Hudson, good, yes. mor good morning. Good morning to you, sir. Thank you for doing this interview. My pleasure. Now, I introduce you as Robert Allen. What, what do you go by? I'm Bob. You're Bob, okay. Well, I'll call you Bob today if you don't mind. So, Bob, uh, before we get into your military uh, background, uh, tell us a little bit about your family. Uh, where and when were you born? I was born in Brecon, in near Cincinnati. Uh, pretty much in Depression times, and my father, who was working for Pal Crosley at the time, lost his job, and we moved out on a farm in Highland County between Morristown and Buford. Now, your, your birth date was what? 11-4, November 4th, 1927. And you mentioned uh, your dad. What was your dad's name? Terry Walter. Hodgson. Where, where was where was he from? He was a he was a uh, boy that was raised in Highland County. Okay. And uh, w was your dad married to? Uh, my dad was married to my mom, uh, uh, Marguerite uh, Roberts. The Roberts family is kind of a well-known family in that area, but uh, they married uh, in. Uh, I'm not sure what the date of the marriage it must have been about 1925. But your your mom and dad uh, got acquainted with each other when in school. Apparently, because uh, although uh, she was a couple years younger than him, he'd gone into the navy, came out, and uh, went start enrolled at Ohio State University, as I understand it, and. Depression came along about that time, and he came home, they married, I came along. Uh, where did he serve in the Navy, do you know? I'm not sure about that. Uh, I, and I know he had a medical discharge. Do you know what the reason for that was? What? Uh, no, I'm not sure. Heart, I think. No, I'm not certain. All right. Um, you mentioned he worked for Powell Crosley. Uh, just for the benefit of those who don't know anything about the area, uh, Crosley Field, where uh, Cincinnati Reds used to play baseball, was uh, named after yeah, Mr. Crosley. Yeah, I didn't Crosley. think that was uh, regarding any kind of sport. I think it was a matter of Crosley uh, had a car, had an airplane. Had a radio. Uh, and the radio at that time, yes. He uh -huh. was quite an, uh, a business person in Cincinnati area. Quite well known in the whole area, wasn't he? So, uh, where were you born? I was born in Bree Con, which is a suburb of Cincinnati. Uh, how long did you live? Were you? About two or three years. We moved out on a farm uh, between Morristown and Buford in Highland County uh, of Ohio. Now, were you born in a hospital or home, or where were you born? Oh, I think I was born at home. That was a kind of a normal way to do it at that time. Okay. So, uh, did you attend school? Did I attend school? I attended my uh, entire school was done at Buford, Ohio, uh, a small uh, 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 country school. Uh, was it more than one room? <laughs> yes, there was more than one room. I always uh, jokingly say that my graduation, I was privileged to be uh, an honor student, but that happened to be the third only five of us in the class, so I was in the lower <laughs> half, really. Well, in my high school, there was only 28 in my senior class, so I didn't go to a very large school. Uh, did you go to high school there in Buford? Yes. And how big was your class in high school? 
Well, that was my high school class. That was your high five, school class? Five, five. Wow. Three uh, boys and two girls. <laughs> so did you work uh, while you were going to school? Did I work? Yes, I did. In fact, I'm kind of writing that story at the present time. Uh, we had a farm, a 225-acre farm that uh, I lived on. However, with like young boys or girls or whatever at that age, they needed money. And so I became a huckster route driver uh, for a local grocery store. And that uh, huckster route traveled through the, through the county and... Uh, what was the name of the store that you uh, drove for? Well, it was Johnny Martin's uh, grocery store. And it was uh, located between Morristown and Buford in Southern Highland County both small towns that uh, serving the people with a truck. Well, how much did you earn while you were driving the truck? Well, I don't remember that, but I know that I was a young lad that needed money to go and take my girl out. I, had, uh, I was there at 16 years of age. Uh, I had a Model A Ford that I bought for $200. I remember that Model A, but uh, I needed money. So that's how I did on my off days, uh, I'm, I'm trying to say my Saturdays, I guess, while I was at school but in the summertime on a well, did you have on to a help daily out, basis. Did you have to help out on the farm as well as driving your I did that. groceries? Yes, yes. What kind of, uh, what kind of farm did, uh, did your dad have with cattle or, or well, crops? I, well, we milked cows and by hand and uh, we had a a Farmall F-12 tractor, as I remember, on steel, that uh, we don't privilege to have rubber tires or anything like that, but anyhow, we just lived on the farm there, and uh, kind of a general farm. 212 acres. How many head of cattle did you have? Probably three or four milk cows. That's and did you have to help milk the cows? No. Okay. No, nope, never got into that job. How did you, uh, you lived on the farm, how did you get to school? Oh, I had a school bus came by. Back in those days you had a school bus? Yes, had a, had a school bus that traveled the roads. Um, and did you have a school bus uh, all during your uh, school years, grade school and high school? Yes. Now when you were in high school, did you have time to engage in any sports or any... Oh, well, if you have uh, five members in a class, uh, everybody plays, and uh, yes. What you know, did you play? Basketball. Okay. But that was the extent, that was the only sport that was between the schools and that sort of thing was basketball. As I remember, I don't, we didn't have softball or that sort of thing. We played it, of course, but not competitively. Well, when you only have five boys in your class, uh, you don't have and enough three players. Boys. Three boys in the class and two girls. And uh, you filled out your basketball team from the other classes? Yes. What, did, what position did you play? <laughs> I don't know. Probably, I was probably the smallest, so I was a, probably a forward. Forward, okay. How was your team? Did you did you have a fairly good team? Oh, no, no I, I, I'm not sure what our record would be. I, I don't know if we really played to win. We played for fun. <laughs> How about your coach? Was he a teacher at school? Yes, Pop Gorman. <laughs> what was his name? Pop Gorman. Millard, really, but he was Pop to everybody. All right, good. So uh, when did you graduate from high school? 1945. What did you do after graduation? Went in the U.S. Navy. All right, before we get into that, did you have any brothers and sisters? Yes, I had a sister. And what was her name? Janet. And is Janet still living? No. Uh, how, old was, uh, how old were you when Janet was born? Uh, probably four. All right. And did she go to the same schools that you went to? Buford. Uh-huh. Yes. And uh, did she graduate from high school? Yes. And what did she do when she graduated? 
got married, I guess. I'm not really sure. I think I, she didn't go on to college, so yeah, she got married. Uh, and they finally moved out west, so she and her husband and our family. When you say out west, do you remember where California. they moved? California. California? That's about as far west as you could go, wasn't it? Or Arizona, I'm not sure. Arizona or California, All I right. guess. Do you remember her husband's name? John Wilkin. John Wilkin, uh, W-I-L-K-I-N? Yes. Do you know what John did? What kind of work he did? No, but he went, they moved out west because he had, he had a job opportunity there. I'm not sure what he Okay. How about your sister? Did she work outside the home? I think. Right. I'm not sure what she did. Well, you said you, uh, you went into the military after high yes, school. Yes, I went into the Navy. How, how soon did you go in? We were all anxious to get in, uh, so I had to finish high school, and as soon as we finished high school, we was ready to go. But we was, that was toward the end of World War II, and uh, they didn't call immediately to, to go into service. It took me... I joined immediately, but I, it was probably two or three months before I was called. Do you remember uh, where you were when uh, Pearl Harbor was attacked? Oh, yeah. Tell us, where, tell us about that. Where were you? It was you? in 19, what, 47? 40, no, 41. And December of 41. 41. Yes, I remember having a radio when we heard all that. Uh, I lived on a farm that we didn't have electricity, so everything was by battery. Okay. That uh, did hear uh, the attack on Pearl Harbor, and I remember my dad saying at the time, well, fortunately, uh, Bob, you're small enough that you won't get involved. Uh, but I eventually did, but the uh, war was pretty well towards the end of, at that time. Well, let me ask you about your home. Uh, you said you didn't have any electricity. No. Did, you, did you have running water? No. Where did you get your water supply? A uh, well. All right. A uh, hand pump. So what did you use for lighting? For lighting? Lighting, yes. Kerosene lamps. And uh, did you do homework uh, at home from school uh, by, by lamp? Oh, I had, uh, I was a vocational agriculture student, and so uh, it's FFA, if you're familiar with that. Right. And uh, I had some projects of my own. Okay. Was, so I carried that, and interesting enough, that was my major when I finally got out of the went to college, okay. and I became a teacher, by the way. Oh, good, good. We'll, we'll talk That's about that. That's a little that. farther along in my life. We'll talk about that uh, in a bit. Okay. So where did you go to sign up for the military? Cincinnati. <clears throat> and what branch did you sign up for? Navy. Why did you choose the Navy? My dad <clears throat> had been in the Navy. Did he encourage you to join the Navy, or did No. They suggested that I not be in service. No, no one, I think, uh, probably maybe one of their children in service at that time. But uh, nevertheless, I was strong-willed and did a lot of things that probably uh, necessarily parent approved. Did you still have your Model A when uh, you joined the military? Yes. Did you drive that down to Cincinnati? <laughs> probably. Did your dad know that you were going to join, or did you find, did oh, he find out get, later? I had to get permission. Because you were not 18 yet? No, I was 17. <clears throat> what did your mom think about that? <laughs> I don't remember. I don't remember her having much of an opportunity to <laughs> to think. All right. So you went down to Cincinnati and you signed up for the Navy. Yes. And you came back home and you were home for. I waited. You were for home a, for a few months. Uh, two or three months, yes. Uh -huh. What did you do during that time? Well, I probably worked on the huckster route that okay. I. Okay. I'm not. 
I was waiting, I guess, on a, on a call, so. Well, tell me a little bit about that route. Uh, what kind of uh, goods were you delivering? Was it uh, food? Was it vegetables and meat? It, it was de delivering, um, well, it was a huckster truck. And uh, in that truck, I uh, had a uh, log either side, it was bins, and uh, it had uh, groceries. Okay. All kinds of groceries. Uh, and the outside uh, had kerosene because a lot of people uh, didn't have electricity, and so they bought kerosene to put their lamps and all. Uh, we also bought chickens that, so underneath the truck were uh, cages uh, to buy chickens, and they would exchange the chickens for the amount of money that they had right. to buy groceries. Okay. Uh, for many people, it didn't necessarily have uh, uh, vehicles to travel in to go to the grocery, and so we brought the groceries to them. I worked there part time, uh, and uh, as I went to school, and in the summertime, well, I worked every day. What was your day like uh, during the summer? What time would you start, and what time would you end? Oh. Would you start early morning? I don't know. It's just a regular route that uh, the regular route that ran. Uh, and we would you start early? Seven or eight o'clock? Yeah, I did. Well, I'm sure it was an all-day affair. Uh huh. I guess maybe a little bit interesting, I drove past one of my daily routes was where my wife that I married lived, uh -huh. and I met her there by going on that route, and I've often wondered what if I hadn't gone on the route. <laughs> That's pretty nice. It's like many things in life, why was my dad in a situation where they had to move to the farm? that went to school to Buford to met my wife who also was there. So all of those things are sometimes you wonder about how they're all put together. Right, right. Everything kind of fell in line for you, didn't it? Yes. <clears throat> okay, so uh, you spend your time driving uh, for, for your employer Just, and yes. then, then they call you to come in. I remember I've been driving that truck at 16 years old. And then 17 and graduating. Uh huh. Now, how did you get a notice that you had to report for duty? If, did you get a letter or? Well, I must. I, I'm trying to think. You ask a question. I mean, what? I suppose it would probably be a letter. I, uh, we did have a phone, however, and it could have been. I had a party line phone, if you get the party line clear, the other four people on the line uh, could spend a lot of time on there, you wait on your turn. I remember those days myself. <laughs> um, was that a, a hanging on the wall phone or? Yes. Okay. Uh, yes. And when you wanted to make a call. That was a big phone. When you wanted to make a call, did you uh, tell the operator, the operator who you wanted? Call the operator. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, where did you report for duty? Back down in Cincinnati? Yes. And uh, where did you go from Cincinnati? I went uh, to boot camp. Where was that? I was in Great Lakes. Up in Chicago? Uh, we got ready to get out of our training there. I remember very well uh, our company was all called, ready to go, and they were loading up, ready to go to their new duty station, wherever that might have been. All at once I was called out along with three different people out of our unit to call not to go on that. Well, that put us in a position wondering what's going on here. Uh, rumors floated quickly. What those three guys, where they're going? It turned out because I had uh, taken typing in high school that I was going to be going to the Bureau of Supplies and Accounts in Cleveland, Ohio, which was a, which a place that was 
putting together a record, pay records, of sailors who had lost their lives. And we said, how much did the government owe them and all of this sort of thing. So there's a Bureau of Supplies and Accounts in Cleveland, and that's where I served my duty. Well, what was, what was the rumor about where, where that unit was going? Uh, it was uh, all imagined. Uh, okay. Where are those three people going to be going? How come they're not going with the others that are going out on assignment? Do you know where the others were assigned to? No idea. What did you think about it when you were going Scared. to go to Cleveland? Scared, not knowing what's going to happen. All right. So uh, did you go directly from Great Lakes over to Cleveland? Yes. And how did you get there? By a train? Train. <clears throat> Three of us. Pardon? Pardon? Three of us. Three of them. Three, three out of that unit. Did they get to be real good friends of yours? Yes, they did. And did they all have the same assignment as you? Well, I never thought about that. I guess they did, because I remember uh, becoming was friends with them in Cleveland as well, where I, my duty station was. Well, tell me uh, how your normal day went when you were uh, th there well, in Cleveland. Gee whiz, you're <laughs> that would be a 1940. Five. Five. And you're wanting me to give you my day. <laughs> where, where did you I'll live? I'll tell you more in 1946 because I married my girlfriend in 1946. One day later, at the age of 19 years old, I married, and she was at the age of 16, by the way. And I might as well go ahead and tell you that we're going to, we're going to celebrate our 77th wedding anniversary next month. Well, congratulations. That is real milestone. And she is living yet. And what's her name? Dorothy. What was her maiden name? Ellis. Ellis? Ellis, E-L-L-I-S. All right. Well, when you went to Cleveland, uh, before you got married, where did you live? Where did you live? Prior, prior to that? Before you got married, where did you live well, in I was Cleveland? in the Navy, of course. Uh, lived on the farm in uh, well, Hiram there a, County. Yeah, but was there a base that you lived uh, in Cleveland? Oh, yeah. I would, no, we lived in uh, our own quarters. Okay. Yeah. And where was that in relation to downtown? Was it out in the suburbs or was it right on the lake? No. Prospect Avenue. Wow, are you bringing back memories that I never thought. Prospect Avenue. I remember that. And I remember uh, my getting married. And that's another story. But my getting married and taking my 16-year-old M married girl on Prospect Avenue in Cleveland, Ohio. And yes, I remember driving, riding uh, the bus from there to my place of work, but it seemed to be close. I don't know how far it was. Did you and your new wife uh, live in an apartment? Oh, we lived in... <laughs> We would call it uh, pretty much, a, a, I guess, an apartment. I can remember it was very, very dirty. I remember she was a, trained to be a very clean girl. I remember her parents bringing her there, bringing her parents and seeing where their daughter was being left. <laughs> and you can imagine leaving a 16-year-old and you say, well, is she pregnant? No, no. That was five years later. Well, uh, what did uh, her parents think about uh, you marrying uh, their 16-year-old daughter? I don't know. They didn't tell me, but uh, I'm sure they told her. I, I, don't, I don't know. Well, where did you get married? Did you get married in a church? I don't know. Okay. I have to think about that.
Boy, you're bringing back all kinds of memories that I haven't thought about in a long time. Well, that's part of my it, job. It wouldn't be a part of it. That would not be in the church, no. Did your family uh, uh, follow any particular religion? Yes, Christian. Okay. Uh, did you go to church when you were in high school? Yes. Where was your church located in town? In Morristown, Ohio. All right. Morristown. <clears throat> When you got married, did uh, Jesus when you got married, did you and Dorothy uh, go to church? Yes. Now, what uh, well, what church did she follow before you got married? I don't know. Well, after you got married, what church did you follow? Church of Christ. Okay. It was, a, it was a Protestant church. All right. So after you got married, uh, Dorothy's only sixteen years old. Uh, was she able to get a job anywhere? Uh, no, I don't think, no, she didn't get married in Cleveland. She didn't work in Cleveland? No. All right. I'm trying to think how long we lived in Cleveland. Probably three or four months before we were, I was discharged. What kind of training did you have in Cleveland to do your job record keeping? Well, I had taken typing in school, high school. That, extends, that was the extent of my office training. But anyhow, so typing was all, I don't know that I ever typed in Cleveland. We just filled out, well, our purpose in Cleveland was to uh, deceased sailors who had lost their lives and uh, they um, were owed money sure to their uh, whoever and that was my responsibility did those I, did those sailors have any life insurance did the government pay them any oh yeah death everybody benefits? had life insurance and did did you take care of that too no <clears throat> Yes, everybody in the military had life insurance. So, so your main job was just to see that the families of the deceased sailors got paid what they were owed. Yes. Um, that wasn't my responsibility to do that. It was responsibility to determine how, how much, much was owed. Yes. Okay. So, uh, how how long were you uh, at Cleveland? Probably a year. Then where did you go? Home. Where were came you? Came home. Came home and that little girl, that 16 year old, who has now become 17, said, you're going to college. Oh, look at my grades. <laughs> I still have my grade cards, by the way. I can't go to college. You're going to college. I went to Ohio State University and enrolled in the College of Agriculture. Oh, good, good. Let me, uh, let me try to tickle your memory one more time. Where were you when uh, you learned that the atom bomb had been dropped? I'm sorry? Where were you when you learned that the atom bomb had been dropped on Japan? Were you in Cleveland? <clears throat> I'm not sure I understand what you're saying. Were you in Cleveland when you learned that we had dropped the atom bomb on Japan. Oh, no. No, where, I was not. Where were you? I was probably ahead of time. I'm not sure. Okay. I'm not sure. I probably was still hmm, waiting for... Assignment? You tell me the date the bomb was dropped and I'll tell you the date of where I was. <laughs> okay, well, it was in 45. It was in 45. Oh, I graduated from high school in 45. Okay. And so it may have been. It was the summer. August 6th and August 9th. August 6th of 45. I, I would have been. Uh, Just out of high school. I would have been in Great Lakes, Illinois. Oh, were you? I would be, I'd be in the Navy then in 45. In August. Yeah, I signed up in May. I, All right. I was a period that. Uh, they didn't call me right away. Do you remember anything about 
how everybody felt when the news came out that uh, Japan had surrendered? No, I, I don't remember. Was there a big celebration in Cleveland, if you remember? Well, I wasn't in Cleveland yet at that time. I don't. don't Up in Great Lakes, I don't were. I don't. Was there a big celebration in Chicago? No, I wasn't. In, I. I don't know where. I, in August, that what you asked me. August of 1945. 45, right. I was still home. You were still home. Yeah. I, okay. You signed I, I up in signed May. Signed up for the Navy, but I was waiting for active duty call. Huh. I must have been home. All right. Now I was thinking about that. Well, when you left Cleveland, you came back, you came home. Got from Cleveland, you know, my, my girlfriend and I, who is now my wife, came home, loaded all our belongings in the car, all of our belongings in the car, and drove home. I'm sure that we moved in with her parents, probably. But it wasn't long until she's telling me I'm going to college. Did you still have your old car? No, I must. I don't know. Oh, I don't know. No, I had to have it because I certainly couldn't have another one. I didn't afford it. All right. But, uh, <clears throat> but all your belongings fit in the car with you and your wife. I can't admit that's all I own. <laughs> So I remember uh, enrolling in college. I can't. She so, insisted I was going to do that. Can you imagine? So she, you. She was 17 by that time, by the way. So you enrolled in Ohio State in agriculture. Yes. And uh, did you work while you were going to college? Yes. What kind of work did you do while you were in college? Uh, worked there on on one of the college farms, doing work there. I don't, I don't know. Was, uh, was your work on the farm there at Ohio State part of your education? No. Did you get paid for that work? I don't know. While you were going to uh, school at Ohio State, did your wife work? Yes. What kind of work uh, did you? Uh, no, no, not at Ohio State. Okay. I, I, Oh, that wasn't too boy. I, I was married in May of 1945. <laughs> I don't know. Well, when did you and uh, Dorothy start having children? But, but anyhow, she started. Uh, she, when I when we moved, when she finally decided I was going to go to college, and I. Uh, decided, okay, she went to work. I remember she went to work, and uh, that uh, it was in 1946, I guess. Now, your question was what? Well, do you remember what kind of work she did? Yes, she was doing secretarial work. Uh, at school, and or? She was seven, no, oh. and as an employee, no, as an employee. Okay. And she worked until I graduated. Now, when did you start having children? As soon as I graduated from college. Okay, and what was your year of graduation from Ohio State? Let's see, 45, 46, Do you remember that? 50 or 51. <clears throat> 50 or 51. All right. Uh, you, you were married May 25, 1946. 46, rather than I was. I, I, I would have been in 46. 46, right. And uh, your, your first child was, uh, was that? Yeah, David. David. David, and that was in uh, 1950 or 51. Well, he's, he's going to be, he, he told me the other day he's going to be, he is 71. He's 71 now? Yeah. Okay. Gee, that's a long time ago. 
<laughs> you kind of wonder where those years go, don't you? Yes. And so uh, where, where did you and Dorothy have David? Uh, where were you living then? In uh, Leesburg, Ohio. I had graduated from college. I was a vocational agriculture teacher. And the reason I chose that was because in high school, that was a teacher that I liked very much uh, who came there and taught vocational agriculture. And so when I went to Ohio State, they said, what do you want to do? That was the only thing I thought about. I'd like to be like John Bricker. John Bricker was my vocational agriculture teacher. And uh, I uh, wanted to be like John. So that's what I did. Enrolled at Ohio State. Came out of there, started teaching at Leesburg. It was my first class. And interesting enough, last week, I got in touch with one of my first students that really? I had, Neil Milner. How did you get in touch with your, one of your first students? How did I get in touch with him? I kind of kept in touch with him because he was a honor student. He became the president of the Ohio FFA Association, oh. which FFA is a part of the vocational agriculture, and I followed him then with during his working years. He now lives in Hawaii and is retired, of course. And uh, but uh, that was, and I just contacted him last week. That's amazing. Yeah. This is all of being being guided. That's that's amazing. So you must have been a good teacher because the, he's done quite well. <clears throat> he's done very well. How long did you teach agriculture at uh, Leesburg? Probably about four or five years. Now, after you started having, having children, when you had uh, that, your son David, it, did your yes. wife work outside the home? And until, until then. Okay, but once you had David, she stayed home? Right. And then uh, what was your next child? Jeffrey. And how old is Jeffrey now? Jeffrey is now, uh, since he's 68. 68. Um, and, and he's then, a retired school administrator. And you were, you were still in Leesburg when you had Jeffrey? No. Where were you when you had Jeffrey? Wilmington. Wilmington? Ohio. Were you teaching in high school? No. I was a... I was, uh, at that point, had uh, become a county extension agent. A uh, county extension agent was a person who uh, did FFA or, or did 4-H. Okay. I was a 4-H agent. Uh, I didn't do that very long in Clinton County, which is this county, isn't it? Yes, right. it is this county. Didn't do that very long until uh, I had uh, the bank, the Clinton County National Bank of Wilmington came and asked if I would come with them as a farm agent. And they also had just purchased a bank in Nuviana, which is also here in Clinton County if I would uh, come to be their manager, their bank manager at New Vienna. Hmm. Never been a banker. You mean leave my 4-H project and be a banker? I did. I went to New Vienna as the manager of that bank. Hmm. Stayed there for about two years until the president or the owner of the bank in Hillsboro decided that I would be a good place for them. So they came and convinced me that I should come to Hillsboro to be their bank president at that time. So that meant more money for the family, didn't it? Interesting uh, enough, oh boy. <coughs> 
you freaking all these things combined, I was offered many different positions around the state of Ohio. Ohio State University wanted me to become a beef specialist, a beef. <laughs> I had many different opportunities. Well, why didn't you take Ohio State's offer? I'm sorry? Why did you not take Ohio State's offer? I don't know. <laughs> it was good that I didn't. Why do you say that? Because I spent my career as a banker in Hillsboro. Okay. Uh, we didn't... Uh, <clears throat> I'd be bragging to say, but we had a little bank that I went to there, but we soon became the largest bank. The largest bank in the, in the town or in the county? In, 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 in Highland County. Okay. So... In uh, fact... Uh, <clears throat> well, now go ahead. Uh, Fifth Third Bank in Cincinnati liked it, and they came. And we sold the bank. So the bank was sold to Fifth Third? Fifth Third Bank. Now, did you stay with them? I didn't stay anywhere. I, at that time, I retired. You retired? Well, how long did you stay with the bank there in Hillsboro once you got there? <laughs> how many years? Oh, no. In Hillsboro? No, no. I was there probably 20 years. Let's see. Were you president all the time you were there? Yes. And you saw the bank grow yeah. very substantially. Yeah, I had a lot of opportunities at that time. I <coughs> became president of the Ohio Bankers Association. Oh, good. At that time. Good. Uh, not as a active duty, it was, that's an honorable. Uh-huh. Uh, well, tell me uh, why you were uh, a banker there in Hillsboro. Did, you and Dorothy and the family lived there? Yes, oh yes. Once you started having children, did she work outside the home at all? No. All right. Now you, besides the two boys, you also had a girl. I had a girl. And what and was her name? She's Susan. And Susan uh, got married uh, and uh, they moved out west and she deceased, had cancer. She was a cancer patient and deceased. Uh, do you know how old she was when she passed away? Not sure, but she had children. Uh, she had... Uh, was she in her 40s or 50s? Had or two children, I think. Pardon me? Was she in her 40s, 50s, or 60s when she passed away? Do you know how old she was? <clears throat> Not sure. What was her married name? Susan. I, 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 Hodson, Susan, Hodson. Yeah. Oh, Wilkin was her married name. Is that Wilkin? Wilkin, W-I-L-K-I-N. All right. Yes. Um, now, how about, uh, let, let's... Uh, You're bringing memories to me that I haven't even thought about for years. Well, this is a, this is a test of your memory. You're doing real well. <laughs> oh, I can't believe this because I've lost my memory. Oh, <laughs> uh, you're doing fine. Now, you, you also had a sister. Yes. Her name? Uh, that was Janet. Janet Patricia Hudson? Yes. Did she get married? Yes, she was married to John Wilkin. She was married to John Wilkin. Now, you told me that Susan... John Wilkin and Susan... Well, Su oh, now I am getting confused. Susan was our daughter. Yeah. Um, and you told me her married name was Wilkin. Married John. I'm, I'm already really confused now. My sister was Janet. And she married John Wilkin. Okay. Susan. I'm confused. 
know. Susan was the one who moved out west. Correct. And deceased with cancer. Right. Janet was my oldest, was my sister. And you think she married John Wilkin? Janet married John? I'm all, yes, that's right, that's right. And is Janet still living? Uh, yeah, and my, my sister's, or my uh, daughter, Susan, yes, daughter of Susan, oh, I can't think of her last name. All right. Any, any, anyhow, she's the one, she's deceased. She passed away. From uh, cancer. And, uh, now, is your sister Janet still living? No, Janet is the one that moved out west and died. Janet had, oh, I'm so confused. Janet must not have been. Janet and John moved out west. My daughter was Susan. Well, I don't, she I don't, married Reinhardt, that's what it is. Reinhardt? John Reinhardt. Okay. Yeah. And Are John you? Reinhardt is still living and, and... How old were you when Janet was born? Probably four or five years old. And you say she and passed she, away? Yeah, Janet had cancer. Okay. Janet, Janet Wilkin had cancer. Okay. She passed away. All right. Uh, did yeah, she was the one who lived out west? Did Janet and John have children? Janet. Yes, Janet and John had yes, yes, yes. They're all out west. Okay. How about uh, how about Jeff? Jeff. Did he get married? Yes. And do you know his wife's name? Uh, his last name? Jeff Hodgson. No, his wife's name. Phyllis. Phyllis? And um, do uh, Jeff and Phyllis have children? Yes, they do. They have, uh, they have uh, two children. Where do they, where does, uh, where does Phyllis and uh, Jeff Court, live? Courtney, uh, is single, lives in Washington, or in, uh, uh, oh, she's a teacher, lives up in, anyhow, in Ohio, okay. in Ohio, and she's been there, she told me the other day, she'd been there 14 years, so. Good. Uh, and, uh, have a son that's Nathan. Nathan is a grandson. Nathan works uh, for Google. For Google? Google. Uh huh. Uh, where did Jeff and Phyllis live? Jeff and Phyllis uh, live in Washington Courthouse. Washington Courthouse, okay. So Washington Courthouse isn't very far away. Do you see them very often? No. Okay. And uh, not as often as I should. I feel like, but uh, yeah, I think they were here last week. And well, good. How's their health? Their health good? Yes. Now you came to this interview, and you have a walker. Uh, how's your general health? Good. And you're 95 now, right? Yes. I don't need that walker. I depend upon it if I need it. Okay. <laughs> Good. Good. So uh, you live here at... Yeah, I've uh, been very blessed with my health. How long have you lived here at uh, Cape May? <clears throat> two years. Two years in May. And where did you come here from? Where were you living before you came here? Hillsboro. Hillsboro. All right. 
And do you have an apartment uh, for just you and your wife? We have a home there. All right. And how how is your wife doing? Uh, my wife. Yeah. My my, uh, my, my wife is. Uh, she healthy? No. Yeah, yeah. Dorothy is in a, in a nursing home at. Um, Dorothy is in a nursing home at Hillsboro, I guess. Yeah, yeah. It's, okay, so she. Yeah, yes. She's Sally, not here. Is that, she's not here with you at Cape May. She is not here. Okay. They wouldn't accept her here. She, okay. she needed her too much care. Was, they, they, they couldn't accept her. No, she needed too much care. Pardon me? She needed too much care? Uh, I don't know that she needed too much care. She doesn't. Her memory is gone. And, All right. And, uh, but now, were we're, you still, we're still married and we're still, yeah, she, in fact, I just sent her a card yesterday, but. Well, now, were you honorably discharged from the Navy? Yes. Now I see on your papers that you also joined the Marines. <laughs> While I was a student at Ohio State University, they came around and said that uh, there is a Marine Corps Air Squadron at, at uh, Port Columbus. That you can join up out there and you just go out, uh, what? one weekend a month and you get paid so much. I was desperate for money at the time. I joined the Marine Corps. Damn! I hadn't been in for very long until they called me and said, well, it was Korea that came along. I think it was Korea. Yeah, right. Korea came along and they said, you're going active duty. Well, I could do everything I could do to get, keep from going because I'm a student at Ohio State. Uh, and uh, no, I'm not. I'm a teacher. I just I've graduated from Ohio State already, and uh, but I had to go for a year. Where did you go? Cherry Point, North Carolina. It was a, it was a Marine Fighter Squadron uh, there at Cherry Point, and that's where I went. Well, did you spend any time at Port Columbus? No, I don't know why I mentioned Port Columbus. I don't know. I well, must have. I don't know how Port Columbus got into that. I don't know whether I had to report maybe to there. I don't. Well, I, I was, wouldn't be a Marine's base. Well, I was. I was born in. Columbus. Oh, that's that's uh, no. I was going to. Seems like that's where we went for our military weekends, but that wouldn't. I, I don't know where that was. Well, I was born in Columbus, and my dad used to take me out to Port Columbus in the know. 50s, early 50s, and there wasn't much of an airport there, well, as I, I remember. I may have gone out there for, the, I don't even know what we did. I know we had to, I was called into active duty, and I went to Cherry Point, North Carolina. I know that. What was uh, my what wife were your went with me. what were your duties at uh, Cherry Point? I, I I don't know the answer to that. Did did you have any training to fly as a pilot? Say the war was over then. No. No training. No. I was wanting to get out when I was getting in. I was fine when I was earning my pay for being a member of the reserve, but I, <laughs> I was anxious to get out. Well, I was, I had a job. I was an employee of uh, Leesburg as a teacher, and I get called in the military service. <laughs> well, your, your DD-214 says that uh, you uh, enlisted uh, March 24 of 1950. Okay, that would have been that would have been uh, about the time I graduated from Ohio State. 
And you went in as a sergeant? Yes. <laughs> Staff sergeant. <laughs> and at the time you were living in uh, Columbus on Neal Avenue, which is near the university. Yes, the second floor of a second floor of a home there within walking distance of the campus. Can't remember can't believe I'm remembering this. And yes, you yes, Neal Avenue. According to your papers, uh, you enlisted in the uh, Navy on July the 2nd, 1945. Uh, you enlisted. Enlisted. And then, yeah, I was probably when I went on active duty. You went in active duty August 29 of 1945. Okay. Okay. Hey, you're just checking me to see that I am being truthful. Uh, <laughs> so you, you went on active duty after the bomb had been, after the bombs had been dropped on Japan. Yeah, when did they get dropped on the and bomb? August 5th and... 6th and 9th. The 6th and 9th. Really? Yeah, Tom's got a better memory than I do of that. So it was uh, after that that you went active in the Navy. And I see here that uh, uh, your net service in the Navy was January 3 of 2008. Did you stay in the reserves? In the reserves, yeah. yes. Good, good. Um, And according to the, your papers, uh, uh, you had service at the Great Lakes in Illinois, and then you field uh, Brigade uh, B U S N A Cleveland, Ohio. Okay. All right. And uh, golly, Ned, you had a you had a traveling allowance of sixteen dollars and fifty cents. <laughs> It's, it's on your DD-214, my man. And uh, <clears throat> your DD-214 is signed by Lieutenant V.C. Anderson. Do you remember him? No. All right. And the, you got a World War II victory medal. <laughs> Do you remember that? I was the extent of my, <laughs> my, my ribbons. Well... You did what you were required to do. Yes. Um, then uh, w when you were released from the Marines, uh, your officer signing this was R.T. Stump, S-T-U-M-P, Captain. Do you, do you know him? I know that. I know I almost, almost decided to stay in the Marines. That would be a tragic thing. And uh, came out of that. I was. So now, according to your papers, uh, Bob, you uh, you enlisted uh, March 24 of 1950, but you didn't get into active uh, Marine service until February 29 in 1952. And it says that you were a teacher at Fairfield School in Leesburg. Fairfield was the name of the school? Yes, right. at Leesburg. At Leesburg, correct. Correct. Uh, now, on your DD-214, it, it says a permanent address after you got out was... Uh, uh, out on a farm in Mount Oreb in Brown County. Did you go to Mount Oreb? No, I don't know what. No. All right. <clears throat> Tom, if you can uh, see this. Who's that fella? For goodness sakes, how'd you get that? Hold it steady on the table, 
Who is that young guy? Is that you in the Navy? Yeah. I, huh? Yeah, that was me. That was me. No question about that. You're a good looking young man. And uh, we have your honorable discharge from the Navy. It says that you are a storekeeper third class. Yeah. All right. And that was dated October 9 of 1946. Rolling. All right. Uh, while we're on break, I had a chance to uh, refresh your recollection a little bit, uh, Bob. Uh, when you were when you were still in high school, yes, you you had some buddies when you were a junior and senior in high school that dropped out of school to join the service. You remember I that? Had buddies, yes. Yeah. In fact, Frank Crest was one of those. Now tell me about Frank. What what do you remember about Frank? Did he join the Navy? Yes. And did you hear about his service? Oh, I knew about it. Yeah. Okay. What what do you remember about uh, Frank's service in the Navy? Well, I just know that it was a buddy that I had that he says, you know, he wanted me to go with him down to en enlist, and he quit school to go to the Navy. Uh, I think he later had. Uh, I don't know what his life was. Well, I but think you, he was aboard the ship that went down. But, but he was older than you, wasn't he? Frank was. Yes, a, I think a year maybe. Uh huh. And he quit school, but you didn't want to, correct? Right. So, uh, uh, he was a survivor. Uh, was he on a destroyer? Yes. And his ship was sunk by the Japanese? That's what I thought. Over in the Pacific. Yeah, exactly. And uh, did, when you found out about Frank, did you consider him a hero in your eyes? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. okay. Now, up at, <clears throat> up back, let's go back up to Great Lakes. And uh, the, uh, the unit you were in, uh, what, what unit was that? Do you remember now? Up at Great Lakes? What unit? Yeah. Up at Great Lakes. Golly, no. Can't. Uh, you remember? Being in Green Bay Company. Green Bay Company. 1121. I don't know about 1121, but I remember Green Bay Company. Were you, when you were in Green Bay Company, were you expecting to be in action somewhere? Oh, yes. All right. <clears throat> they call us out of duty on that three. I don't know where. I don't know where the rest of the company went, but they pulled those three of us out that went to Cleveland. Now, when you were in Cleveland, uh, you told me off, off camera that uh, you liked to go to sporting events. Yes. And where, what did you go to? Oh, we went to the Cleveland Stadium, as I remember. I think the Cleveland Indians, maybe? Cleveland Indians. Their baseball team. Uh, I'm not sure that they had a professional football team at that? Browns. You, me you remember the Cleveland? Browns? Yeah, the Browns. Cleveland sure. Browns. Paul Brown. Paul Brown. You remember Otto Graham? Yes, well, Mar the name, yeah. Marion Motley, you remember that name, yes. fullback? Oh, yes, Marion Motley, that was a lineman. Uh-huh. And do you remember uh, Bob Feller, pitcher for the Cleveland Indians? Yes, yeah, yeah, saw him pitch. Yeah. Yeah, Bob Feller. Yeah. Now, Bob Feller uh, would have had a great record if he hadn't been in the military. He joined the military during his career, baseball I, career, I too. I know that. Yeah. Uh, along with Ted Williams, he also joined. Who? Ted Williams, the great Williams, hitter for yeah. the Red Sox. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> so uh, when you went to those sporting events, uh, you told me that uh, being a veteran, you could get in for nothing. Yes. 
How often did you go to the uh, games? I suppose whenever I had to, when it wasn't enough to an obligation of being where I'm supposed to be. All right. And back in those days, you had played basketball in high school, but I don't believe Cleveland had a uh, basketball uh, franchise at that time. Well, uh, don't forget, I got <laughs> married there too, didn't I? Yeah. No, wait a minute. No, 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 nothing about well, we also talked about a little event when uh, you uh, you were home on leave and you got in a little trouble because you sewed something on the sleeve of your uniform. Oh, on my... Yeah. Yeah. What did you sew on there? Well, I suppose it was a... I, I don't remember. It was in a promotion from... What was I at the time? Was I a... First was it in the Navy or Marine Corps? That you were in the Navy. Okay. Navy, I must have been a first class seaman, and I yeah. made, it, made it to be a third class petty officer. Okay. So and I, it was a. And you were in Cincinnati. I cover and, and you had sewed that uh, patch, that yeah. tripod. On, yeah. And uh, somebody found you. Who found you? Shore Patrol? Yes. The Shore Patrol saw yeah, you? That would be the Shore Patrol, yeah. And they asked for your papers? Yeah. Now, uh, tell me about that. What happened? I don't remember it. That you, you, you reminded me. I could, uh, I would have guessed that the Shore Patrol would have ripped off my, uh, ruin of my weekend <laughs> to, to know that. Uh, but uh, I probably was a, before I left Cleveland, I had announced uh, the fact that we had been promoted. That I, I don't remember to be promoted. Do we take a best test score or just time? I don't know. But anyhow, I, I remember the event of getting a, it's going to screw up a weekend. Well, the shore patrol asked you for your papers. Yeah. And your leave paper showed that you were only a first class seaman. Yeah. And you had the wrong uh, insignia on for a first class seaman. So they sent you back up to Cleveland. There's a lot of that. Did he? Oh, I, I don't know. I thought I probably went on home. I don't know. They sent you back up to Cleveland and oh. you had what was called a captain's mask. Captain's mask. And what was that? Well, Did you have to appear before other hearing, officers? Yeah, hearing okay. for somebody. Yeah, there's a world of difference between a first class and a third class penalty. And what happened at that hearing? Did they I give remember. you any penalty? I don't remember. I guess I was, I was what I said I was, except that I hadn't been, I don't, my leave papers didn't say that, I guess. Well, I'm, I'm going to take the liberty of reading this. It says you, when you got before that uh, that hearing, you, you were scared beyond words. Yeah, you wouldn't. faced the officer as I tried to explain what happened. I lied when I said that I called a buddy to learn the test scores and had, be, had been posted, showing that I had passed the test and was to receive the promotion. The officer must have seen how scared I was, even though he must have known that I had stretched the truth. He only gave me a reprimand. Okay. Remember that? So you kind of got off scot-free. <laughs> so that was one of your life's learning experiences, you say? That was a... And I was a Navy man that never got a tattoo. You got a tattoo? No tattoos. Why not? I don't know. I never had an opportunity, I guess, because I'm supposed to have a tattoo in the Navy. Well, when you, when you were uh, on duty, did you see a lot of uh, Marines or sailors come through with tattoos? Well, they all, most of them have, yeah. You know. Uh-huh. Do you remember, as a Marine at Port Columbus, uh, you were with Keith Fields? Keith Fields? Yes, I remember. A Marine that. Corps Reserve pilot. Do you remember him? Keith Fields. My pilot? 
Yes. A, a, a reserve pilot. Oh, why? Well, I, I remember the name Keith Fields. Uh, yeah. Huh. You, you say you traveled with him from Columbus to West Jefferson High School. Well, that's all my writing, so I guess. All right. Well, we've we've talked about a lot of things. Uh, sure have. Is have I brought to mind anything that we haven't talked about that uh, would? Oh, well, we a lot of things. How did you like the Marines compared to the Navy? Any difference? I just wanted to get out. <laughs> no matter which one? Oh, no. Uh, I, I wanted to get out of the Marine Corps because I had, you know, my college degree and needed to be put to work. Uh, the Navy, that's what I wanted. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but I was, uh, Now your dad was in World War I in the Navy. Yeah. Was he on board ship anywhere? No, he was sick, and I don't know how his turn, what his years were. I probably got that at home. Okay. All right. Tom, uh, our cameraman, do you have any questions you'd like to ask? And uh, our director, uh, Tom Dreher, do you have any questions you'd like to ask? No, I just want to say thank you for your service, and it looked like you had a ball during this. I didn't event. hear that. He said he thanked you for your service, and it looks like you had a ball in service. Uh, yeah, my, my memory uh, or my fact was I enjoyed that. Yeah. I've had a good life, very, you know, everything we've, uh, when I became a banker, I had the opportunities there that, to do a lot of things as far as much greater if I wanted to do them. Uh, I turned down lots of things, but um, we, uh, I had a radio program I did for 29 years from the bank. That radio program was a morning route from 7.30 until 8 o'clock. And uh, that was a community news item. That made me available to a lot of people with a lot of reasons, but for 29 years, you turn on your radio, uh, you're gonna hear me, that's before I got to work. Well, as a result of all that, the guy who had the radio station, he and I partnered up, and we brought cable television to, to Hillsborough County and Brown County, and, and uh, well, we, uh, but I had a lot of opportunities beyond that uh, in a more state and in, in, uh, political political party that I didn't want to get involved in. I don't blame you for but that. The opportunity was there that I was willing to go to Columbus and this sort of thing. and So I, I turned down a lot of things that were opportunities. I don't know why. I was never smart, and I'm not smart to this day. <laughs> in fact, I'm amazed that I'm sitting here. here. But I was blessed in various kinds of ways with opportunities. Well, b based on your uh, record and your history, uh, you're smarter than the average bear, and you've done well, a good job. Do you remember the name of the uh, what radio station it was? WSRW. WSRW. Is that still in existence? Yes. And was that located in Hillsboro? Yes. <clears throat> uh, How many days a week did you do that? Uh, six. Six days? Yes. 29 years of it. And uh, then I get paid part of the time, uh, part of the time not. Uh, we did all of this writing here was all my writing, right? Yes. Yeah. I don't know why I got in the habit of doing all that, but I've got a lot of stuff that I've written about in my closet over in my room. I've 
and I probably will all get thrown away when I when I end up here. No, you you give that journey. you give that to your family. Give that to your family, and it sounds like you've had a very nice uh, family, and you've had a good family except for the passing of your daughter. I had a good family. Yeah. Well, let me thank you for your service, well, thank and thank you. you for this interview. Well, well, you did a good job. Well, I'm surprised. Yeah, you did you a good job. You brought back a lot of good memories for me. I'm happy I did that. Thank you. you <laughs> You're welcome. Very, very special. I, they didn't even tell me when I was coming over here what this is about. You said something about it a couple, three weeks ago or something. I, didn't, yeah. I thought it was over. I didn't know. <laughs> so thank you. I appreciate it because you brought back memories to me that I haven't uh, had the experience. Well, I hope they were good memories. Extra, extra, extra. I can't, can't imagine. I don't know why I have written down as I've gone through my various life. I don't know why because. Well, well I'm, I'm glad you did, and thank you. Well, thank you. <clears throat>